Well, good morning, YouTube. Um, Logi Killer. You guys probably haven't seen me in quite a long time. I figured I would do some reviews of some of my equipment, do a whole series on it, and uh, give you some real uh, answers about some of the products I got in here. Um, maybe you're looking to buy some of them and uh, give you a little more than just an unboxing video and the company's little uh, notes that they want you to know. Give you some real answers. Uh, so let's check out my welder that I recently purchased, um, the Tulium TL200M. All right, so here's the welder, it's Tulium. TL200M. This is a multi-process welder. Uh, not too shabby of a machine. And here's the MIG gun hanging, ground clamp. I've got the TIG torch kind of hanging on the back over there. That's what I have set up on it right now. Uh, this is a lift TIG. On this setup and you have to buy the torch separately it's not terribly expensive I think I may paid 50 or 60 dollars for the TIG torch um, and the TIG torch came with some consumables uh, some cups uh, came with some collet bodies some collets um, if you buy the TIG torch um, buy some eighth inch tungsten uh, you will need it it doesn't come with tungsten um, the machine itself, I believe I paid $300 for, uh, three, 310 maybe. Uh, it's not too bad of a machine. It came with the MIG gun, the ground clamp, and the stinger for doing stick welding. Um, let's go ahead and take a little deeper poke at it. Okay, you can probably hear the fan running on it now. Uh, currently, it's set up as a lift tag. Um, there's no options for a lift TIG other than just your amperage setting and your voltage, which is right here. This here's your amperage. This here's your voltage. So if I want to do another form of welding, I hit this button right here. Right there we have stick welding. Same thing. It's going to be your amperage going to be our voltage and then here that's an option for VRD an option for hot start and an option for arc force and that is going to be adjustable through your uh, amperage knob you can turn all three of them on turn none of them on just one of them on doesn't matter it'll let you do it And then we have an option for 30 thousandths wire running 100% CO2 or CO2 argon mix. Uh, again, on the right hand side, we've got some options. First one is inductance. Um, induct inductance is how your puddle will wind up flowing once you start putting it down. Uh, the other option is 2T versus 4T and again it's all adjustable through the amperage knob here is the flux core uh, which they only want you to run 30 thousandths on gas and 35 thousandths on flux not the other way around uh, I'm sure they have their reasons for it um, and again, you get the same two settings, uh, your inductance and your 2T, 4T. And then that one is actually for C20, the 30,000 square. So they got two different settings for straight CO2 and for uh, C20. And again, it's going to be the same settings. Uh, now what do I really think of this machine I run it on 110 volts uh, all the reviews that I have seen everybody has ran it on 220 
and my garage is just not set up to, to handle 220. So, what's the real story here? Well, at 110 volts with MIG wire, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off, get rid of our noise. With 110 volts using flux core wire, this welder runs incredibly smooth. Uh, much smoother than some of the old uh, um, older welders that I have used. Uh, probably because it has um, the inverter technology in it. Um, it's great. I can run up to 8 inch thick material with it and it doesn't give me any problems. As a stick welder, you know, this is a little different of a story. Uh, I have not been terribly impressed uh, with its ability to stick weld. That may just be, uh, be just because it's 110 volts instead of 220. I cannot say either way. I haven't been able to test this out on 220. Um, I, I'm quite familiar with how to stick weld. Here is an old machine. Don't mind how dirty my garage is. Uh, that is a dedicated stick welder, self-generating, um, and I can run quite wonderful beads with that machine. This machine, at 110 volts, I have problems getting the stick to start. Uh, once I get it started, depending on what kind of an electrode it is, uh, maintaining an arc, uh, it's just, just a little lacking. Uh, the fact that it is TIG, is kind of a nice option. I've never learned how to TIG before, learning on my own. Uh, and the TIG, from my point of view, seems to run quite nicely. Uh, it takes some practice to learn, but it does seem to run quite quite nicely. Um, now, the MIG gun, uh, handles plastic, metal body, um, Pretty standard Tweco consumables. Um, this is not a terribly bad MIG handle. Uh, I've looked at some of the Harbor Freight ones that were quite cheap, and then you know they actually have a tendency to break. Um, that one, this one, I, I don't think I'd have to worry about it breaking, uh, at least not anytime soon, and not without being quite a bit negligent with it. The ground clamp. Uh, Ground well, clamp's pretty decent. Um, I prefer a little heavier duty of a style, but you know, for now, this this will, if you're just getting started, this will be more than adequate. Um, and it's working fine for me now, so I'll switch it out later. Um, but inside of here, I've got a two pound spool of 35 thousandths flux. And you get one paper that has all your charts on it. And typically that is mounted inside this door on most machines, but not this one. This paper is gigantic when you get it. And it has a whole bunch of information on it, like your MIG gun consumables, your TIG torch consumables, uh, your welding descriptions, your, your base settings. And because that piece of paper was so big I had to cut it down uh, so that way I was able to mount it in here now it is one giant sticker so all you got to do is just stick it in here and it's kind of a chintzy sticker it doesn't like to stick real well but um, it is a sticker nonetheless and that is able to get us our stuff inside of our lid the rollers uh, you get two rollers one is for flux core, one is for solid core. Uh, they do both 35 and 30 thousandths. They will not do 24 thousandths or 26 thousandths wire. On the back, we got our gas port for the MIG setup. Uh, for TIG setup, it is not ran through the machine. You have to have a torch that has the valve body, which theirs does. 
and you don't get a regulator, so you have to buy a, a, a regulator for your... So, what do I think? Well, uh, I think it's a pretty decent machine um, for a hobbyist. I would not recommend this for a professional that's going to use it day in, day out, uh, use it. Um, uh, it's it's going to be good if you work on a car at home or you uh, build some little stuff around the house. Um, you're wanting to learn how to weld uh, on your own at home. I think this could be quite quite a good machine. Um, the, the abuses of daily use in and out, um, it probably is not going to tolerate it. Uh, for something like that, you're going to want a Lincoln or a Miller or an ESOB. Um, you know, but yeah, for around the home, absolutely, this would make an excellent machine. So, in conclusion, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for stick welding. Uh, this could be quite better on 220, possibly. I can't speak to that. Uh, somebody else may have a better review for that. Uh, but yeah, learning learning how to TIG weld, how to MIG weld. This would be a great machine to learn on um, and take care of those things around the home. So uh, if you guys got any questions, leave them in the comments. Give me a like, a share, and uh, catch you on the next review. Have a good day.